During the past weeks I did quite a few experiments. And when you do experiments, uh, you always have on your workbench, after say uh, one or two weeks, many components that you have used in an experimental way, but now must be brought back to their proper position. Somewhere here. Anyway, uh, while I did it, my idea was to perhaps uh, tell something about ferrite materials. They are, of course, very important, especially in radio technology, old school, I mean, analog radio technology, and also uh, nowadays, for instance, in high quality computer supplies that work on, say, approximately 80 kilohertz or so, with tiny ferrite transformers that can do a, a very good job, a very specific job, and that is especially uh, converting, say, the 110 volts or 230 volts AC to lower voltages usable in a, uh, say, television set a computer or whatever so I have to switch off something take some time pray for that it hinders on the background say uh, this sound anyway um, here are the ferrite materials that I wanted to show. This is out of an old uh, high voltage transformer of an analog television set. This is the standard, say, ferrite rod often used in AM radios going from 500 kilohertz up to approximately 1.8 megahertz. Here you see the real classic AM ferrite rod that's here with a classic AM coil on it. Uh, it's made with so called Litze wire. Litze means that we have here inside perhaps approximately 18 or 20 very very thin wires entwined together and then wound on uh, on that ferrite rod by the way uh, with a kind of paper roll inside so that you can move move that ferrite rod out and in uh, to tune in such a AM coil to its best frequencies where it works at its best say uh, whether resonances of radio stations received on this coil are at its best anyway uh, that means of course that's that's interesting that such a ferrite rod and also this ferrite rod must be made to be properly working on the AM radio bands. That's not always sure. For instance, there are many, say, uh, other kinds of coils. Well, this is a bad example, but anyway, uh, there are, uh, say, a typical shortwave coils that have a specific uh, ferrite materials uh, to be used on the whole shortwave band, say going from 2 megahertz up to approximately 30 megahertz. And when you have such a coil on a shortwave radio and want to tune it in, uh, you can buy uh, specific uh, coils 
and the color of the of the ferrite material is important. So, for instance, this is not a uh, short wave coil, but anyway, when you have say a short wave coil of whatever kind, uh, there are specific uh, ferrite materials that do their job at their best, and there is a color code, say green, red, yellow, etc. etc. Uh, I don't want to pay too much attention to that because in my uh, experience and uh, in all the videos that I have uh, published on YouTube, uh, I've used, say, the most basic um, ferrite rods. And on shortwave, for instance, between 2 megahertz and 30 megahertz, a ferrite rod to tune in is no longer necessary. Anyway, uh, ferrite rods are more or less uh, more usable on lower frequencies, say between 1 megahertz. So, that was a long explanation. Perhaps too long, sorry for that. Uh, well, what about these ferrite materials? Uh, you can go, of course, to Wikipedia. Perhaps you get some information there. Uh, they say on Wikipedia that, for instance, it's about iron oxide that's used. Uh, that is in a certain way true. But on the other hand, uh, it's not the complete information because all these ferrite types uh, are very specific. This is, for instance, a kind of choke coil from a computer. Uh, I will tell later, when I have enough time, how to uh, find out the properties of such a coil. But first, uh, uh, again, about how these materials are made. Ferrite oxide, yes, that's okay, but there are also, say, very specific uh, materials and certain um, other materials. Say rare earth materials, they are used to make such a ferrite rod or a ferrite core. Such a core can be in this way or in this way. So many ways to make a ferrite core to wind a certain uh, wire up here, for instance, or here, and that's a so called pot core and both windings are wound here over each other anyway and for instance this out of a computer power supply I think it's a kind of choke coil anyway well the good properties of these baked coils uh, ferrite baked coils. They are baked in an oven on a very high temperature. The, the, the iron oxide and the other oxides of rare earth metals uh, also perhaps uh, uh, other metals Manganese, samarium, and in case of samarium, that is also, say, a ferrite metal. Uh, I'm not sure, but it could be that, for instance, in this magnet, that's also a, uh, say, ferrite material magnet. There is samarium, so a uh, strange earth of the periodic periodic table inside this baked magnet. Uh, anyway, the, the prop this is by the way a magnet that has 
say a certain polarization. Let me explain it in that way. But here we have ferrite materials and the good property of these ferrite materials is that they don't saturate. When you send in here, for instance, a high F, high frequency, say between 10 kilohertz and 100 kilohertz, or perhaps for the short wave coils, 2 megahertz up to 30 megahertz, they cannot easily be saturated. So uh, that means that such a ferrite material helps to keep the uh, the property of the coil, say a reception coil for short wave or an oscillator coil for all kinds of frequencies between say 20 kilohertz and approximately for perhaps 30 megahertz, uh, they keep the resonance frequency good. So here is for instance a certain frequency band, here we have a peak peak resonance uh, and the good thing is say this is one megahertz and this is 1.2 megahertz the good thing is from such a ferrite rod the desert does not saturate on its resonance frequency uh, when it's saturated on its, on its uh, uh, resonance frequency, it could be that we don't have here, or could be more or less sure, that we don't have here a sharp resonance peak. Uh, when it saturates, perhaps the, say, the resonance is in this way. It certainly breaks down to or between uh, two frequencies in a small frequency band or whatever. But due to the low saturation we have, we can generate with such a ferrite rod a very high resonance peak. And that's of course very interesting. When you want to make a 16 kilo cycles oscillator, you want to make a radio that has to receive on say approximately 1 megahertz or so and that's often done like I told in this way. This by the way choke coil I don't want to pay too much attention to it but perhaps interesting to show and tell here uh, well this is by the way also a kind of choke coil from a computer. This is a kind of standard coil for medium waves. Here we have that uh, ferrite rod and here we normally use a capacitor of in the range, tuning capacitor by the way, in the range of 10 picofarad to 500 peak of our hand. So that's more or less a standard situation. S somewhat sloppy drawing but anyway everyone in understanding uh, radio technology can uh, understand this. Here is a tuning capacitor. Here are the perfect uh, properties of that ferrite rod that make to, that we can tune in in the frequency band between 500 kc and 1.6 mc in a very sharp way. Uh, <coughs> sorry for the sloppy um, explanation. Here is a kind of piece of board with all kinds of bubbles so anyway Thanks for watching, hope you liked it, ferrite materials are in a certain way unique, very unique.